In Matthew's Gospel, an integral part of the Christmas story, the account of what it meant that God was born as a person, involves this corrupt leader, Herod. We see that the Magi, these philosophers from the East, have been drawn by a star to come and worship the, the King of the Jews, the person who's, who's um, been prophesied, and they're, they're drawn to him, and they, they come to Herod and they ask him, because he's the local ruler, can you tell us where this baby, this significant baby, has been born? And so Herod immediately recognize, uh, recognizes a potential threat to his power. And so he schemes and he says to the Magi, oh, well, you go and find him and then you tell me so that I can come and worship him as well. So Herod, a corrupt ruler, pretends that he's going to worship Jesus too. He pretends to worship in pursuit of his own comfort and convenience, he then commands that all the children, all the babies, the firstborn males that have been born in Bethlehem and that surrounding area, that, that they be destroyed. On the altar of his own arrogance, he sacrifices the children of a generation. Now this was quite a small area, but still it meant that a lot of children lost their lives and were sacrificed on that altar of Herod's self-importance. This shows us that Jesus is coming, Jesus as the king, Jesus as the ruler, even in the form of him as a baby, is a threat to corrupt and vested interests. The Bible says that one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. And that includes authorities who currently set themselves up, systems who set themselves up against God and his goodness. So it shouldn't surprise us then when Jesus is born, when God comes as a human being, that that sort of opposition is stirred up, that corrupt leaders recognise when their authority is under threat. And so as we prepare our hearts for Christmas, why not examine our own lives and, and think, are there vested interests? Are there um, levels of, of comfort and my own autonomy that have set themselves up that would regard Jesus as King as a threat? Are there areas in my own life where I need to bow the knee to Jesus, where I need to, to worship him and to allow perhaps my own comfort, my own self-interest to, to be stripped away in following him.